Hello, and welcome to episode number 39 of the Hafey Digital Podcast, a show for creators, makers, and doers, where my goal is to help you make to the max. My name is Ryan Hafey, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how to master your camera. Let's get into it. Welcome, one and all, to the AV Digital Podcast. Oh, I wonder if my uh, intro was doubled up there because I had the desktop audio on. That's okay. If that's what happened, then that's what happened. And we're just going to have to roll with it. But I think we are good now. Hello, everybody. Oh, man. It's been, uh, it's been a long day of like errands and things. So anyway, welcome to the show. Like I said, we're going to talk about uh, how you can master your camera, basically how you can work more efficiently with whatever camera it is that you happen to have. A lot of modern cameras these days happen to come with certain customizational options that allow you to kind of unlock some potential uh, in your camera that you may not have gotten out of the box and will allow you to not only understand your camera a little bit better, but learn how to use it more effectively and more efficiently and to be able to switch between the settings a little bit faster. So we're going to talk about that. But first, of course, we've got a few updates to talk about. For starters, the beverage of the week. Um, this is, uh, I had to put it in a cup with some ice because uh, it was, uh, we just bought it a little bit ago today. I've seen these before. I've had them before as well. It's that Zevia brand. So we buy Coke Zero all the time. And uh, I love Coke Zero. I'm a big Coke Zero fan. I would I, I would much prefer to drink Coke Zero over, say, a uh, um, like a regular Coke. Um, but just wanted to try something different. So this one's just the cola flavored and zero calorie all around. It's just got stevia in it, uh, which gives it the sweetness. And uh, it's not bad. It's okay. I definitely prefer Coke Zero over this. Plus, this is more expensive. But I have to imagine that this is probably a little bit better for you. It doesn't have the aspartame in it and all that. It's just got stevia. I don't really know. Um, but hey, this is what we're working with. So that's what we got today. A little stevia cola. What's next? Of course, we got the sound of the week to talk about. So as you heard in the intro, this is this week's sound of the week. If you think you know what that is, leave a comment in the chat somewhere, wherever we're live, and uh, I will reveal that at the end of the episode. Uh, before we get into the main topic of discussion today, of course, we have some updates to talk about, and really, there's only one update this week, and that is, I got a new hat. Look at it. Check this thing out. So, um, not going to lie, I was suckered into one of those Facebook ads. Uh, I think it was Safari Sun or Sun Safari, something like that, popped up on uh, my Facebook at some point, or social media somewhere, Instagram, Facebook, one of the two. I don't know. But, uh, excuse me, but, yeah, they were doing customizations. Here, I'll take this off, and we'll go to this view here. You can kind of see. So they had tons of different color options to choose from. You could choose between, you know, uh, but you could change both of these colors. And then for this patch here, you had three different um, shapes. You had a circle and like a, I don't know, two other shapes. I don't even remember what they were. And then I think you had two different colors of leather patch to choose from. I went ahead and went with the dark patch and of course put the Hafey Digital logo in that. And uh, I've already sewn my little uh, buttons in there for my face mask for when I go out. Got to have those now. And they're black so they fit in and kind of blend in nicely. But uh yeah, this is this may be my new hat, and I've actually been on the hunt for a new hat for a while, um, because I don't know. I just uh, been wearing the same that same gray and brown hat for I don't know how long, and I still like that hat, but I figured it was time to change it up a little bit, and why not represent the Hafey Digital a little bit if I'm going to do that? So that's the only update for this week, man. I I um, I still got to find a way to kind of get myself back into the filmmaking mood. Uh, I did pick up the camera a little bit and just do kind of like some, it was, it was kind of funny. It's like, you know, it's one of those, what is the universe trying to tell me moments? But, uh, I, I turned on the camera to do just some kind of like video vlogging 
or video journaling, essentially. Like, you know, I, I every now and then I, I write in a, a journal, or actually lately I've been doing it in my phone, which I'm thinking I'm going to go back to handwritten just because journaling in a phone is just not the same. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I thought one way to maybe get back into the groove of using a camera is just to set up the camera and talk to it for a little bit and do some journaling uh, through video. Um, and I did it and I filmed for about like 11, over 11 minutes, popped the footage into the computer and just watched it back real quick and realized that, uh, there was some very quiet, but, um, audible microphone feedback. I was using the video, um, the, the Rode micro or mic video mic go, I don't know the, the little one that's like 50 bucks. And, um, I don't know, for whatever reason, it was plugged. Maybe the cable was, I don't know. The connections were a little off, and, and the, the feedback was so quiet that you couldn't really see it in the audio meter, so I didn't know it was happening until I put it back, uh, or until I played it back in the computer. I tested a second clip. It did it again, and then I tested the microphone on an external recorder, and it worked fine, so maybe it's just, I don't know, maybe I had the cable pulled a little too taut. I don't know. So then I switched over to the Video Mic Pro, I believe that is. Um, but I'm excited because finally the Deity D4 Duo microphone, which I've talked about and you've probably seen a couple creators talk about it, uh, it's finally shipped. Uh, I haven't received it yet, but it should be here sometime this week. So I'm excited about that. That, by the way, is the microphone that allows you to record in front and in back to two separate channels at the same time, which is something I've talked about before. Because, you know, when you're, when you're filming just with a regular camera, Obviously, you're going to have a shotgun mic on the top, which is going to point in the direction that you want to hear things, and then everything from behind the microphone uh, is going to sound a little bit muffled or boxy. Uh, and I'd always thought it'd be kind of cool to have a microphone that could f that could record in both directions, and that's what this Deity microphone is supposed to do. Uh, initial reviews of it seem to be promising, so I, I may actually do. I, I don't. I told myself I didn't really want to do reviews, but this may be one thing that I will review only because it's something that I've been looking for for a while. So anyway, those are the updates for the week. Let's jump right into the topic at hand, which is uh, we're talking about, again, cameras, customizable features, and really just how to make the most out of your camera experience. So now to keep in mind, I'm going to be using the Sony a7 III for my example here. Now, a lot of the modern cameras that you have these days, uh, if you happen to have the Sony a7 III, congratulations, this is this is gonna be great for you because you'll be able to follow along. If you don't have a Sony a7 III, then um, you, you still may have some of these options available to you on whatever camera it is that you have. You may just have to poke around for them a little bit. Some of them you may not have, I don't know. But I think for the most part, most of them in some way, shape, or form, you, you will have on whatever modern digital camera that it is that you own. So what I'm going to do is break it down. We're going to talk about customizations to help with your photography first. Then we'll go to video and then we'll talk about a couple customizations that can kind of help in both areas. So let's start with photography. And so I've got my Sony a7 III here and I've hooked it up to HDMI, which is helpful because then I can give you this view and show you what's going on in the uh, the screen there. So we'll start here though. The first is um, for photography is uh, the first customization that I use on every camera that I have pretty much is back button focus. And back button focus, if you're not familiar with it, is, well, let's back up. So the shutter button on your camera by default is going to serve a couple different purposes. For starters, uh, you, you may know that if you half press the shutter, it's going to kind of take an exposure reading and it's going to find focus, right? And then if you want to take a photo, you just press the shutter button the rest of the way. Um, I find that that's a little bit inefficient. Um, plus, if you're doing a lot like a lot of run and gun photography, um, using the just the right amount of pressure to make sure you don't take a photo and you know, get everything in focus and it can be a little bit of a challenge. So what I have been using for a number of years now is back button focus, which basically takes away um, some of the roles of the shutter button 
so the shutter button and back button focus, its only role now is going to be taking the photo. It's no longer going to take an exposure reading. It's no longer going to focus on the subject. Its only use is going to be taking the photo. And that's going to take having to half press the button out of the equation. So what you would do, and again, I'm, I'm not going to go through exactly which features that you need to change within the menu system in the Sony uh, to do to, to set up back button focus. Uh, there's plenty of the, the information on Google and stuff like that to figure that out. But I just kind of want to tell you about how it benefits. So for me, this AF on button, which may be a little tough to see. There we go. So you have an AF button on the back, and this is the button that I've chose to be my back button, hence the name back button focus. So all I have to do, and I've talked about this too when it relates to boxing photography, but what you do is you use your thumb and just push in this button and aim at your subject. And if you have continuous autofocus on, it's going to continually focus on your subject as long as you keep your subject in kind of the focus area. So you can just press and hold this button, move it around, keep your focus. It'll also take the exposure reading. And then when you're ready to take your photo, then you would just snap or press in the shutter button. And it sort of takes some of that guesswork out of it. Some You don't have to half press. You can just kind of press and hold. And then when you're ready, click, 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 click. And I find that it's just a much, much more efficient and accurate way to shoot photos. Um, take some of the guesswork out and just, for me, I picked it up right away. I think for some people that it, it takes some getting used to, um, I will say really the only big downfall to back button focus is that you, it, you can't really just hand your camera to someone and be like, Hey, can you take a picture of us with my camera? You have to kind of explain to them how it works. And it's not that hard. You just don't press this button. And then when you're ready, press that button. But anyway, back button focus. I swear by it. I love it. Um, you should try it if you haven't and see if it's for you. The next thing is, and this is great for mirrorless cameras, uh, having the ability to switch back and forth between the EVF, the electric viewfinder, and the display on the back of the screen. So we'll go back to here again. I'm gonna zoom out because I don't need to be this close. Oops, wrong way, there we go. Boom. All right, so on the Sony a7 III, I'm going to unplug this momentarily. You can obviously use the um, the display on the back here, or you can uh, use the EVF, which you're not going to be able to really see through that. But what I've done on this is I've used, because the Sony a7 III has a lot of customizable buttons, so I have customized this button on the top, uh, which is C2 on the Sony a7 III, to toggle back and forth between that. So if I press it again, you'll see that pop back up. And then if I press it again, again, you can't see it, but now it's back to the EVF. And I find that that is helpful um, when it comes to certain types of photography, again, in, in boxing, or, or if you just, if you like to shoot at unique angles, uh, let's say if you get down low or if you get really high, you can't use the EVF all the time. You can't, you know, like if I'm shooting boxing, sometimes I, I'll, I'll try to get under the ropes a little bit and shoot kind of a very low angle looking up. And I, I mean, unless I want to crick my neck down really low, and if there's a lot of photographers around you, that's not always easy to do. Um, so instead, I'll just turn on the display on the back and then I'll flip that up a little bit so I can see into it. And then I'll just do that. And then when I'm done, I want to go back to the EVF, press a button, you're back in business. So a nice quick feature. Next up, um, using manual f exposure for better creative control. This one, I mean, there's nothing wrong with using some of the audio features like the shutter priority and aperture priority uh, in certain situations. But um, yeah, I recently had an instance with a photographer who was uh, using shutter priority for basically everything, and that was kind of like his default. And he just cranked up the shutter speed and shutter priority super high uh, and let the camera do the, you know, the rest of the work on compensating with ISO and aperture and all that. And as a result, um, I think that he was, he was setting the shutter um, unnecessarily high at like one thirty two hundredth of a second or something, something pretty high. Uh, and as a result, 
all the photos, even in, you know, photos in bright daylight were grainy because the ISO is cranked up to, you know, as high as like 12,800. Um, so not, not going to give you the clearest of images. Uh, but, you know, if you want to take advantage of using shallow depth of field with a wide aperture, um, or, you know, if you want to freeze motion and, you know, really focus on shutter speed, like there are other creative decisions other than just finding a proper exposure. You got to think about those things. Do you want, you know, th does the photo need to be super crystal clear and, and not grainy and, and nice and sharp? Well, in that case, you might want to keep your ISO as low as you can. Do you need to freeze action? Well, then you're, you're, you're going to need to make sure that you crank up your shutter speed. Do you want a nice shallow depth of field? Then you're going to want to make sure your aperture is nice and wide. Or if you're shooting landscapes and you want more in focus, and you're going to want to make sure that you, you know, close your, your aperture. Um, and you, you have to think about those different exposure settings uh, as kind of one cohesive thing to get the creative look that you're going for. So if you don't already do it, I highly suggest getting used to shooting in manual. And by the way, you know, like on the a7 III, again, you can customize the dial. So for, for me, there's a, a dial up in the front, uh, kind of closer to the lens, because that one's closer to the lens. That one I have designated to be uh, the dial that changes the aperture. Uh, and then there's a dial on the back here that I've designated to change the shutter speed on the fly. And then the, the wheel on the very back of the camera, uh, I have to change the ISO. So I can change all three of those settings super fast, super quick, whether I'm shooting photos or taking video. Um, and I can make those decisions within, you know, a matter of a second. So just something to, to think about, um, next time you're out shooting. Uh, drive mode. So let's go in here. Am I on? Yep. Cool. So drive mode is, um, basically just determines how many shots you're going to take, uh, within each. Let's see. Oh, can I do this? Why am I not? Huh? I was trying to do, oh, there it is. There we go. Hold on. Wait. Nope. Really? I'm, tr I'm trying to do picture in picture. Oh, that's why I was pressing the wrong button. That was dumb. Okay. Can I do this? No, I can't do that. Turn that off. Okay. I'm here. I'm in the corner. Sorry for anyone just listening. I was uh, having a little equipment hiccup. So anyway, drive mode. There's different drive modes like single shot uh, or, you know, high speed continuous uh, shooting Maybe you want a timer. Um, there's some other custom modes that I never use, bracketing, things like that. But let's say, uh, let's say you're just kind of running and gunning, and you want to be able to get a couple quick bursts of photos at the, you know with with each press of the shutter. You might want to go with a high speed continuous. Versus, let's say if you're, I don't know, I've used uh, in, fo in food photography a lot. I'll frame it up. Uh, sometimes if it's on a tripod, I'll frame it up and I'll do a two second timer just so I don't have to, you know, introduce any camera shake. Um, or, you know, sometimes I may just, if I know I just need to get one good shot, I'll just turn it to single shooting. So I'm not getting a bunch of additional shots that I don't need. Um, but on the Sony a7 III, I set it to basically be this bottom. Oh, let's go here. Oh, no, it's not going to work for me. But uh, this bottom dial, if you press that, then it's going to take you quickly into that drive mode feature versus having to go into the, the menu and, and change it. So it just kind of takes a couple of those steps out of the process. So that's drive mode. And then finally, um, Sony a7 III allows you to create custom menus. So again, we'll go in here and we will go into the menu. And that is designated here in this little star. You can add certain, you can add menu items from any of these other pages to a custom menu here, which basically allows you to access it a little bit faster. And one of the things that I like to do when it comes to photography is um, put in a uh, custom or a silent shooting option. So there may be times if you're shooting an event or something like that, and you don't want to interrupt if, it, if it's a quiet event or, um, you know, maybe it's like a, a prayer service or something like that and you want to keep quiet, you obviously don't want to be making a bunch of shutter noise. 
So I like the option to quickly go in and turn on silent shooting. And uh, in instead of having to search through the entire menu system to find where that is, I can just find it once, pop it into this custom menu, and then quickly go in there and turn it off and on if I need to. So there we go. That's the, the that's the list of photography specific um, uh, customizations and things to, to keep in mind. Let's move on to video. And then again, we'll talk about some that kind of encompass both. By the way, something that I haven't done yet in this episode, which I, I forgot to do, but we'll do now. If you haven't yet, please, if you're here with me, hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening and follow me on social media at Ryan Avia on Instagram and Twitter. And let's have a conversation when this is all said and done. So anyway, moving on to video. The let's see, the first one I have on the list for video is auto and manual focus uh, toggling. So if you have ever shot video, there may be times when your autofocus fails or there may be times when you've made a creative decision to uh, shoot in manual focus um, on the Sony A. Well, first of all, I mean, you can you can use and whether it's C1, C2, C3, C4, any of these dials, you can change them to whatever you want. Um, but also, which is cool on some of these uh, lenses, the Sony lenses, if you haven't have them happen to have them, they have this little button on there. And you can um, assign that to do whatever you want. Of course, you could sneak up here and turn that off and on. But just for me to be able to go in, a quick press of the button. And what that's going to do is, oops, there we go. No, no, no. Oh, it's because I'm on photo mode. Hold on. We're going to go to the video setting here. So now... I wonder if it's not going to, oh, that's why, because it doesn't, on live, video, it doesn't have live view. But um, this button that I just showed you there is going to allow me to quickly toggle between um, autofocus and manual focus, which is super helpful, especially since it's right by the focus ring. I can just press it, dial in my manual focus, and there we go. And then I'm ready to go back to auto, just press it again, and we're back in business. So do that if, you, uh, if you're someone who goes back and forth between manual and autofocus. Next up on the video list, focus assist custom button number three. So along the lines of manual focus, if you happen to use um, manual focus a lot and you really want to dial in your exposure, or sorry, your, your focus, what you can do is uh, set up a custom button, wrong angle, but hey, how you doing? Set up a custom button that will uh, turn on the focus assist. And then when you press it, let's see here. Is it going to, I don't know if, oh yeah, see. So it's not going to show you, but on my screen right now is a little box. And then when I press it, it's going to zoom in again. And it just basically allows me, so as you can kind of see on the screen, again, again, you can't see what I'm seeing on the back of my display, but here, let's do this. Having to go back and forth here, but that's okay. So this, all right, so I'll do it again. Press C3 on the back there and it introduces a little box. When you press the okay button, it's gonna zoom in real tight so you can check your focus and dial it in using the focus ring however you need to. Press okay again, then it zooms back out and you're in focus and you're ready to go. So that's a helpful little tool there. Um, focus assist along those lines when it comes and let's see if I can go into you know what it is because I'm shooting in 4k and the HDMI output I don't think is um, is going to give me the live view on the back of the or on the uh, display but that's okay uh, so I'll just explain this one focus assist uh, or no I'm sorry focus yeah yeah it's, I guess it'd be a focus a different kind of focus assist but it's uh when you um when it uses like contrast, sort of, it's not contrast detection, but um, let's see. If I'm using manual focus, we're going to zoom in. Let's see if we can do this here. This is not optimal, but we're going we're gonna to figure it out. Okay. Oh, hold on. There we go. Okay. If you have manual focus on... Do I have manual focus on? There we go. If you have manual focus on, let's see if we can, there you go. You can kind of see 
as I change the focus, watch the poker chips at the bottom there. You'll see a little red light here. I'll zoom in on that poker chip. You see these little red lines. And when the red lines are most, mostly visible, that means that you are in focus, that whatever it is that has the red lines on them, those are in focus. So uh, having that set up, and there are different color options you can choose from. I think you can choose like white and red and one other color. Uh, I like red just because it's the most visible for me. But those are great, again, if you're someone who likes to use... Whoops, wrong button again. Those, <laughs> uh, those are great if you like to use uh, manual focus. Next up is the histogram uh, for video. There's there's a lot of different ways that you can dial in exposure. And, uh, um, you know, on the back of the... I'm just going to go back to photo mode so I can kind of show you some of this here. So down at the bottom, or at the very bottom of the screen, you see 150th f2.8, and then next to that is basically like your exposure reading. It's, it's showing you how far away you are from being in proper exposure, and it's telling me that I'm two stops um, underexposed. But now, without changing the exposure and shooting up into the light, now, now it's showing it's blinking because it's saying I'm way overexposed. Now this has its downfalls. Let's say if you're if you're framed up like this, and I maybe I want to expose for my hand, but I've got this bright light in the back. Now my hand itself looks relatively exposed, maybe a little overexposed, but it's still telling me the camera's still telling me that I'm like 1.3 to 1.7 uh, stops overexposed, and that's because you have all this light coming from the softbox there. So that's kind of when the histogram comes in handy. And if I toggle the display here, you can bring it up. So there's a histogram in the bottom right-hand corner. And as you can see, as I move it around, now there's just kind of a solid, li solid line on the right side of the histogram. And that's because I'm just essentially shooting directly into that light. Um, so this shot, if I was trying to expose the softbox, would be overexposed. Now, if I come down here, Let's say I want to get a shot of this uh, roadcaster. Right now, um, you know, exposure looks decently okay. If I bump up ISO a little bit, you can kind of see. And how you know is because you don't have on the histogram here, bloop, you don't have too much uh, loaded up on one side or the other. Like if it was super overexposed like this, you see how now how everything collects on the right side because the right side is referring to highlights in your white areas and the other side is referring to kind of the darker areas and then if I turn the exposure way down let's say ISO 100 now you'll see how everything collects on the left side there so if you're trying to get proper exposure and and the history gram is going to look different depending on your settings for example if you have if you have a bright if it's a bright sunny day so let's say you're shooting outside it's bright and sunny and there's not a cloud in the sky. Your histogram is going to kind of keep knocking. Your histogram is going to kind of look like this because you're going to have a lot of really dark areas and you're going to have a lot of really bright areas because it's super sunny, which means there's a lot of contrast between the light and the dark areas. Versus let's say if it was cloudy outside, that tends to bring down the highlights and kind of bring up the dark areas. So it's going to look a little bit more kind of a uh, inverted U shaped, I guess. It's gonna look more even from the uh, to the left and the right versus where it's gonna look like a U when it's high contrast, it's gonna look like an in inverted U more so when it's low contrast. So uh, yeah, but the histogram gives you kind of a visual uh, indicator of where your exposure is at. So get used to using the histogram if you haven't already. Uh, and then for the custom features for um, video, the custom menu here, just like we did, showed with the photos, there's a few things that I like to set in here. First of all, um, file format and recording or rec record setting. So file, fo file format, having this here allows me to quickly go in and determine if I want to shoot in either 4K or HD. Uh, and then beneath that, I can determine my frame rate and transfer speed very quickly. As you can see right now, I'm shooting at 4K and 100 um, megs a second, 24p. Um, but having that there and quick access is a lot easier than having to go through and then go down here 
you know, if you don't always know which page you're on or where exactly that is in the menu, then it's a lot easier just to remember that it's on this page here. The other thing is uh, SD card formatting. And I guess this would, um, you know, be relevant for photography as well. But if you need to quickly uh, format your SD card, it's there again, not hidden in the menus. It's just in this one custom menu um, for video. If I'm doing any, um, if I'm recording audio, uh, it's grayed out right now because the microphone is off and I'm in photo mode, but this would be allow me to go in and quickly change the uh, audio record level if I needed to. And then volume settings, which is just kind of the playback volume. If I was going to play back any, anything on the camera itself. And uh, that is the end of the video customizations. Whoops, excuse me. <sighs> All right. So, and then as far as for both photo and video, here's what I would suggest. Number one, uh, there we go. So GoPro view again. Number one is uh, on the Sony a7 III. Again, I don't know if this is available or not on... Um, on uh, different models or you know different brands of camera but this offers a super 35 mode and super 35 is kind of closer to like an APS-C size sensor a super 35 sensor is, is very similar in size um, especially on video on this camera uh, if uh, well here I'll just I'll just show you what it does first and you'll kind of you'll get what I'm trying to say so um, I've designated the button in the center wheel here this this button right here when i'm shooting photos and videos is my super 35 button whoops wrong one there we go and if i press it what it does is it just zooms in so su super th and i'll turn on the uh display so or the um there you go so you can kind of see that little guy right there if i press it again it turns off so that's the little super 35 indicator. Now, if you, I'm shooting on a 16 to 35 millimeter lens uh, currently on this, uh, on the Sony a7 III, and 16 to 35 is, is a very wide lens. And there are times when I may need to get a little bit more zoom, but I can't, maybe can't move any closer or maybe I don't have time to switch out lenses. So being able to switch to super 35 mode and still have that same 4K resolution. Um, that's going to give me basically, you know, if you think of max, the, the max zoom on a 16 to 35 is going to be 35 millimeters. And then 35 times about 1.6 or so, which is kind of the crop factor for that super 35. 35 times, let's say 1.6. So now you've essentially got a 56 millimeter uh, lens on your camera and then you can you can do the same thing with photography or when you're taking photos The the only thing with photos though in super 35 mode if I remember correctly um, on the a7 III it Changes the resolution of your final images, which I think it changes it to 12 megapixels from 24 or whatever the default is on this Which for most people is going to be more than enough, especially if you're just using it for you know an Instagram post or something like that it's a uh, but but if you need something high resolution, you may want to stay away from it. But it's good in a pinch if you need it. Um, and then next up, uh, focus area. So that is let's go back in here. Focus area I have set on the the back wheel. If I press it to the left, it's going to just take me to this focus area. And and this is just your different focus zones. So are you shooting with kind of if you are you using the full screen for your focus are you uh, do you want to just use a small flexible spot do you want to just focus in the center i I, I tend to use zone focus quite a bit so i can quickly and easily switch uh, from the kind of the left and the right just sort of a more, more focused area versus having to use a super small point or a you know basically the entirety of the screen of the focus of the screen space i guess so having quick access to that to change that if you need to uh, could be helpful and then let's talk about uh, zebras zebras are great uh, for indicating when you have highlights that are blown out so again we'll go back to this um, and if i were to crank up you'll start to see it here let's see if i crank up my zebra. Oh, i wonder if it's not going to show nope not going to show 
So clearly this is well overexposed and that soft box is entirely blown out. Now you're not seeing it here in this view, um, but when, when you get to a certain point when your, um, uh, when certain things in the frame are overexposed, you'll start to see little zebra lines that go across and you can set that to different levels. For example, you can, you can tell your camera, at least on the a7 III, um, show me zebras when I hit 95% um, exposure or show me zebras when I hit 100 plus. So you know, like when you're, when you're officially clipping. And that's just helpful to know because when you clip highlights, you can't typically recover them in post. So knowing that um, is a, it's just a quick and easy way to make sure that you're maintaining those highlights if you need to. Uh, white balance custom button, once again, and uh, I use the C1 button on the top of the camera here, and that just takes me quickly to the white balance settings so I can adjust that if I need to. Um, white balance is one of these things that I'm, I'm trying to get into the habit of setting it uh, custom more often. Uh, it's just, at least, especially when vlogging, it's a lot easier just to use auto white balance, um, but I find that in, in editing, there's been a couple of videos when I've, where I've used it, and then in editing, you see the white balance shifting a little bit in certain scenes, um, which makes color grading hard. So if at all possible, set a, a white balance setting. Uh, and if you want to do that, setting a custom button that gives you quick access to it makes it easier to do that more consistently. Um, let's see next. So the Sony a7 III has two SD card slots. Uh, I like the ability to be able to switch back and forth between them very quickly. So on this one, on the wheel on the back, if I press down, it's going to, oh no, I'm sorry. If I press, oh, on for video, for photo, I have it set to press C3. Uh, but if I, on video, if I press down, it changes it for me, but this allows me to quickly go back and forth. And why would you want to do that? Well, uh, there could be a couple of reasons. I know when I shoot boxing, if let's say if I'm shooting fights, I'll use one SD card and then maybe if I need to turn around and get a quick shot of someone in the audience or maybe if I'm going in the locker room to shoot uh, the fighters in the locker room, I'll switch to the other card so that I can kind of keep those photos separate. Uh, same thing with video if you're just trying to kind of separate two different things that you're shooting or maybe one card fills up or is getting close to full and you want to switch to the other one, you can quickly and easily do that, which is nice. And finally, the... Ah, the um, in custom menus, let's go back in here. The final custom menu item that I have set up is memory recall. Um, one of my biggest gripes, and I've talked about it before with the a7 III, is, is kind of switching back and forth between photo and video. Um, some settings stick around when you go from one to the other when you would prefer that they wouldn't. For example, picture profiles. Uh, you have to, you know, if you use a picture for profile in video, you have to turn it off when you switch over to photo if you don't like using a picture profile. And as Gerald and Dunn has illustrated before, using a picture profile will change, I guess, your gamma curve or whatever it's called. Um, so it will change how your raw files look when you get them in. If you shoot in raw, it will change how they look in Lightroom. So I tend to shoot with no picture profile on. But... Uh, so memory recall allows you to, let's say if, you know, okay, you want to dial in, you can go in and on the manual settings or on your, on your video dial here, you can set uh, whatever video settings you want. And then, um, you, then you can set those to one of the memory recalls. So M1 and M2 are your kind of your two memory options. Lock those settings into M1 and then uh, you can do the same for photography, set those into uh, slot number two. And then on the dial here, there's a number one and number two on the dial. You can easily switch back and forth between them to go from one pair, you know, your video settings to your photo settings. And you don't have to worry about changing picture profiles or focus zones or anything like that. It's all, it's all going to be baked into those custom um, dial settings. All right. That was a lot, man. Yeah, man, that's these these modern cameras are great when it comes to that kind of stuff. And 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 honestly, if you haven't taken the time to kind of learn about some of the customizations you can do, uh, you're missing out on uh, on a lot of potential 
um, functionality with the camera and you're probably wasting a lot of time just, you know, going through the menus and things. So spend some time on setting it up and, and memorizing some of those customizations. You'll thank yourself in the future. Anyway, that's it for the main topic. Of course, we have to do the sound of the week reveal before we get out of here. So once again, the sound of the week is... And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the sound of trying to put on a camera lens in the dark. You know what I'm talking about. If you've ever tried to put on a camera lens without being able to see the little dots that line it up, it's kind of like putting in like a USB, uh, you know, USB stick into a USB slot. You, you never know which way is the right way, so you got to fumble with it. It's the same thing with a camera lens. It's not always easy to know exactly which way it's supposed to go on, especially in the dark. So that is me fumbling over getting my lens on in a dark space. But eventually you get it on. Anyway, that is it for this one. I'm going to go ahead and call this one quits. If you are still with me, I appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button wherever you have to be watching or listening. And then follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey on Instagram and Twitter. And let's have a conversation when this is all over. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Keep on creating, making, and doing. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.